Kaveri on the Matney Show, 60% of Bangaloreans saying it's the pay that's important, not so much the people. Hmm, quite an insight. Do stay tuned to Radio City 91 till evening because Ray, route, on Route 91 you can find out what does Bangalore think about the same thing. Is it the pay? Is it the people? Because it's time for me to be headed out. It's 1.53 and I've got time for one last song. And this song is going to be one of my very, 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 very dear song. And it's a really nice song, a favorite of mine, A.R. Rahman composition, slightly different from the ones that I usually play you. It's from the film Sapne. And uh, while I'm headed out, let me again leave you with my usual line saying, be careful on the road. If you're driving, be really, really careful because traffic condition isn't like all that great in the city. So be really careful. And if you're stuck in a traffic jam, be sensitive to the other drivers. And if you want to mail me, Bangalore at myradiocity.com, that's the email address. And tomorrow is a request special, so don't forget to send me your request and dedication. For now, I'm out of here. Take care and stay locked because coming up is Fiona with simply a just my name. The Matney Show with Sindhu. Sindhu with the Matney Show. ಮಾತಾಡೋದಿದ್ರೆ <laughs> 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 ಅದವ್ರ ಹೆಂಡತಿ ಕಲ್ ಉಗಸ್ಕೊಂತ ಇರೋದು ತುಂಬಾ ಶಿಸ್ತಿನಿಂದ ನಾವ್ ಎಷ್ಟು ಸುಂದರವಾಗಿ ಕಾಣಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದೀವಿ ಅಂತ ಜಗತ್ ತೋರಿಸ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಕನ್ನಡಿಯನ್ನ ನೋಡ್ಕೊಂಡ ನಿಂತ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಯ್ಯೋ ಈ ಜನಗಳಿಗೆ ಯಾವತ್ತು ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಬರುತ್ತೋ ಇಲ್ಲೋ ಶ್ರೀ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಬಿಡ್ರಿ ಪರವಾಗಿಲ್ಲ ಈಗ ಹಾಕೊಂಡಿರೋ ಟೋಪಿನೇ ಸಾಕು ಇನ್ನೊಂದ್ಸರ್ತಿ ಟೋಪಿ ಹಾಕೋಬೇಕಾ ಈಚ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಡೇ ಲುಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಮರರ್ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ But how many of us have really asked this question? Who is the person gaping at me from the mirror? Is it me? Really me? If so, who am I? But aren't we really fortunate? Our reflections in the mirror mutely obey our commands. What if? What if the reflection does not obey our command? What if it thrusts its hand out, catches us by the collar and asks us, who am I? Do we have an answer for the question, who am I?
in the mirror who is it in the mirror set in the mirror it's me is it yeah it's me if so who are you i'm jayden i didn't ask your name who are you i'm a man well i didn't ask for your sex who are you Actually my father is I'm not bothered about whom you're related with Who are you Okay I'm a college student I have a goal in my life and Who are you Who are you To tell you the truth I don't want to be this I want to be someone else But only because of this family responsibilities and social constraints and this expectations I'm like this I don't want to be this. I want to be someone else. 
the most frequent impediment that people find in turning their eyes inwards upon themselves is that they are afraid of what they shall behold there. S.T. Coleridge I don't want to work hard. I want to be like this. So what? So what? This is not called acceptance. This is another way of rejection. Well, once upon a time, there was this person. The one thing that troubled him incessantly was his shadow. It followed him wherever he went. Finally, he decided that he will get rid of the shadow. So he tried to walk away from it. But no, the shadow would follow him. He tried running. Despite that, the shadow would follow him. No matter what were his efforts, the shadow would not budge. So a friend came up with an idea. He thought that if he would go on the rooftop, the shadow would not probably reach him there. But despite his many acrobatics, the shadow persisted and stayed. The shadow was far away, but its root was right at his toe. If the shadow has decided that it will not leave him, what this poor friend of ours can do? As a last resort, he tried running away from the shadow. He ran and ran and ran. But no. Whatever were his efforts, the shadow would adamantly follow him. Finally, he was exhausted and he broke down. At last, a friend comes to know something very simple. The more you run away from your shadow, it draws longer. But the nearer you come, you accept it. It becomes a part of you. Take up the whole responsibility on yourself. Don't blame others. Once you accept yourself means you are accessible to the greater resources of yourself. Swami Vivekananda Are you? Pardon me? Who are you? Isn't everything over? What else is left? What if I tell you that the you that you have accepted is not the real you? What do you mean?
if you know who is me please tell me well at this instant it's really simple you are a fool blind with anger without having answers for my questions well you are not a fool i can guarantee you that then who am i hmm so once a tigress pregnant with its cub went hunting in the forest it prowled on a flock of sheep but unfortunately the tigress died giving birth to a cub the sheep took pity on this orphan cub and started to nurse this so the cub became a part of this flock of sheep it was too happy being bleating eating grass and blissfully being a part of this flock it listened to the story of its ancestor sheep and completely believed it too was a sheep forgetting thoroughly who really it was made the tiger sheep believe that it too was a sheep and erased all the traces of its tigerhood one fine day another tiger came hunting in the forest it was surprised to see this tiger sheep amid the flock of sheep so it decided it would catch hold of this tiger sheep bleated the tiger sheep but the tiger was surprised to see a tiger bleating it said hey look you're a tiger and not a sheep why do you bleat the tiger sheep said oh no i i'm 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 a sheep and not a tiger i have to go home but the tiger dragged this tiger sheep along to a pond and showed its reflection there it said look i am a tiger and this is my reflection and that is your reflection if i am a tiger and your reflection is like mine you're also a tiger and thus the tiger sheep looked at its reflection for the first time and realized who it really was and when it cleared its throat it heard itself roaring and not bleating Finally the tiger left the flock for the jungle Is it possible why not How can it be? Eh, come on. Of course, it's a story. Story. People who consider story as just a story are fools. Come on. We have got so many problems and distractions. The history of the world is the history of men who believed in themselves. It was poverty which taught more than happiness. It was misery which taught more than wealth. And it was the blows 
which urged the inner fire more than the praise. Swami Vivekananda. Even if we want to do something, how can we do? Nothing is in our hand. Literally nothing. Once upon a time, there was this man. I don't want anything else. I want the answer. Once there was this man who wanted to outwit his teacher. He tried a couple of times but failed. This time he thought he could succeed. Hey, hold it. What is this? I'll tell you. This bird is called Finch. Why are you right here? Wait, wait, I'll tell you. Be careful, okay? It's okay, it's okay. Now tell me, whether the bird in my hand is alive or dead? It's alive now. If you continue to squeeze it, it will be dead any moment. But why have you brought it here? Look, I will go to that guy and ask him whether this bird is alive or not. If he says it's alive, I'll just squeeze my hand and kill the bird. If he says it's dead, I'll simply open my hand and the bird will fly away. This time he should be wrong. Sir? Yes, please. I've got a question. i got a bird in my hand. I want you to tell whether it is alive or dead. It's very difficult to say whether it is alive or dead. But one thing, whether it should be alive or dead, it's in your hands. I knew I was not a born genius, but by constant and continuous effort, perseverance, self-belief and above all, self-introspection, I could achieve. Albert Einstein I can do it. Hey, I'm serious. I think I can do it. A man who was asleep got up in the middle of the night. It was because a strange light hit him directly in the face. And when he got up to see what it was, it was none other than God himself present there to give him any boon he would ask. Ask for any boon you would want. It's for you. Ask for a boon. Is it? Yes. Any boom? Any boom. Of all the things, first let me have sufficient money. Then, I must study well and get a good job. Then my parents, especially my dad, should not do whatever I do. What next? Then, uh, 
then, then I must warn a house as soon as possible. Then I must marry one who I like. Then I must get promotions frequently. Then I must be healthy. Is that it? Yeah. Anything more? Nothing. Uh, one last thing. It's not only for me. Let it continue to my children. <laughs> you know. This is the new way of granting boons. All these days we were granting boons to people who would want them. These days we just give them seeds. So that they can plant them and reap as many boons as they would wish. Is it true? Obviously. You mean, I can get as many boons I want? It all depends on your ability to grow them. Next morning, when he really woke up from his sleep, he ran to sow these seeds. He found a clearing, started digging at it, and then sowed the seed. the seed soon, he was now waiting for the fruit. What a wonder, there was no fruit yet. He dug it up and then found another better place to sow this. And again, he was waiting for the fruit but absolutely to no avail. The fruit would not grow. He thought the seeds given by God would yield the fruit instantly, but the fruit wouldn't come. Therefore, desperate for the fruit, he started sowing these seeds in every nook and corner. At last he came to know what it was to grow a fruit from a seed. One ought to find an ideal ground to sow this seed. Sow the seed, water it every day, wait for it to become a sapling and then give fertilizers to it. And when the sapling grows into a plant, give it support and then disinfect it from diseases. And when the plant grows into a tree, you should know how to climb the tree. And when the tree bears fruit, before the other person steals it, you will have to take the fruit yourself. It's only after years of waiting and hard work that one gets the fruits of one's labor. So now, you tell me, what is he supposed to do? Should he keep quiet? Who wants to pay the price for each fruit he gets? 
everybody wants to enjoy the fruits which come effortlessly but if they have to toil for it hmm, they're not ready isn't it isn't it but it's very easy to curse your fate blame others and pity yourself isn't it isn't it yeah look once a fisherman got up early in the morning when it was yet dark he got up because he found himself awake and he thought since he was already awake he could very well continue with his day finishing with his ablutions by the seaside he was just walking along to his surprise he found a sack by the sea dragging it to the shore he examined what was within it but there was nothing but stones laughing at his own stupidity he came back but well someone had played a game on him so he decided he would pay them back in the same token he started throwing a stone after stone enjoying with himself he threw stones one after the other and then in handfuls running into the sea he was splashing stones in fistfuls into the water <coughs> by sunrise he had thrown away all the stones but for the last two examining them in the morning sun he came to know they were not just stones but precious stones
he was cursing his fate for throwing away all the precious stones. But he failed to understand that just beside him there were still two more precious stones with which he could make a fortune. Life has an inner dynamism of its own to grow, to be expressed, to be lived. It seems that if this tendency is thwarted, life undergoes a process of decomposition and changes into energies directed towards destruction. Eric Fromm Destructiveness is an outcome of unlived life. Wait a minute, do you have any questions? Does this film leave you bewildered? Yes, the film is based on certain psychological facts. Please wait a minute, your questions, our answers. What a fictional movie it is, a young man getting into a kind of a dream, encountering an imaginary somebody in the TV, then in the mirror and so on and finally waking up as a changed person. How unreal! Though set in a series of fictional happenings, the film deals with a real theme. The young college student is representative of modern youth, confused, disorganized and misled. In fact, even many grown-ups are in the same state in varying degrees as the young man in the film. Interestingly, they are not even aware of this, nor do they attempt to change themselves for the better. Perhaps a small number of people understand that all is not well, but are often unwilling to accept it. Is it not a genuine problem? The person in the mirror represents our real self. We rarely encounter it, but when we finally do, how firmly we avoid it. In the film, when his real self first appears on the TV, the young man just pays no attention to it. 
but when left with no alternative, he looks so amazed and finds it hard to believe. This is how the journey to self-discovery commences and then passes through numerous stages. Unwillingness to wake up, surprise, evasive answers and finally self-acceptance and self-knowledge. Towards the end, the young man tries to set the clock right. This marks the much-awaited awakening in his life. This is how one travels towards the truth of one's real self. The man in the mirror he finally learns is his real self. This is the real discovery and the film is all about that. A little more about the process of self-discovery, please. Well, just recall what you saw. The young man's inner journey passes through many stages. Our real self is concealed underneath different kinds of masks. To unmask it, we have to introspect and repeatedly question our beliefs about ourselves. This is how the knowledge about oneself gets unlocked. When one tries to know oneself, a new path opens before him. He finds a new meaning in all his thoughts and actions. Then he does not try to run away from his own shadow, nor is he afraid of confronting the man in the mirror. The story of the lion cub regaining its lion identity is the first step towards self-discovery, that is, self-acceptance. This leads to self-responsibility, which is presented through a bird episode. The bird in hand symbolizes our life, our future. We are truly the makers of our own destiny. We can kill it or infuse fresh life into it by living consciously and sensibly. The young man, like everyone else, wants wealth and happiness. He sows the seeds but refuses to wait for their germination. His impatience expresses itself in his frantic efforts to scatter the seeds aimlessly and then dawns on his mind the need to cultivate patience and purposefulness. This is the second step. Lastly, when he repents for having thrown away precious stones, his dejection reveals how miserable we become when we refuse to accept our mistakes and keep accusing others for our own failures. Men in general, says Swami Vivekananda, lay all the blame of life on their fellow men or failing that on God or they conjure up a ghost and say it is fate. Where is fate and who is fate? We reap what we sow. Everything in this world is of the nature of a seed. It is sown, it germinates and it gives fruit also. Assuming that we understand it, what steps should one take to actualize this in life? How to improve oneself? Let us begin by accepting that human personality has many dimensions, physical, mental, intellectual, moral and spiritual. We must grow in all these dimensions. To do so, we must be open-minded, faithful and earnest. Our efforts should cover four areas. First, developing the power of concentration. The more this power of concentration, remarked Swami Vivekananda, the more knowledge is acquired. For behind all spectacular achievements in any field of human activity, there lies the power of concentration of the mind. That is the secret, the greatest secret. And the purer a mind, the greater is its power of concentration. Impurities such as greed, lust, jealousy, etc. only make the mind more restless and scattered. For the mind to gain balance and focus, one needs to live a life based on sound values and practice rigorous self-introspection. Second, ask yourself, is there a reality beyond what your senses perceive? When the mind is calmed and refined, 
we can find a positive answer to this question. Train the mind to separate the right from the wrong, the momentary from the everlasting, the pleasant from the beneficial and practice awareness of our true divine nature which is the eternal spring of strength, vitality and excellence. Third, serve others without a selfish motive. When we serve others, we in fact help ourselves because service expands our mental horizon. When we serve, we discover something nobler than our ego and selfishness and this makes us truly joyful and fulfilled, says Albert Einstein, the renowned scientist. A human being is a part of the whole, called by us universe, a part limited in time and space, a kind of optical illusion. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest to us. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. Service thus dilutes and thins down the veil of separation from others and makes us truly kind and compassionate. Fourth, developing an attitude of respect and devotion towards life and the power that sustains it. This loving attitude releases positive energy and provides us emotional balance which in turn enables the mind to explore areas which were otherwise inaccessible. Devotion to higher ideal promotes well-being and happiness. Finally, this film is an attempt to visualize the timeless truth that man can make or mar his life. It is a question of how much we are willing to work to improve ourselves. It is an eternal quest, relevant to everyone, everywhere, at all times. For self-knowledge alone makes a complete man. Right? Thank mm -hmm. you.